Welcome back. Happiest Mind is uh, the stock on our radar right now. They've reported a good top line growth in Q2. Uh, margins too have fared pretty well, uh, but the company has lowered its full year guidance at 12% on an organic basis versus 25% that they had earlier spoken, out, spoken about, which included organic and plus some potential acquisition. We're now joined by the Executive Vice Chairman Joseph Anantaraju and Managing Director Venkat Raman Narayanan on the show now. Gentlemen, uh, morning and thank you very much uh, for joining in. Uh, Venkat, explain this guidance cut. I know you all don't distinguish between organic and inorganic, but this 12% organic revenue growth, what was your earlier expectation when you started the year? What would have been the contribution of organic growth? Thanks, Shreema, for having us on the show. So when we started the year, we had a couple of larger names in our, uh, in our acquisition pipeline. We had taken that into account while coming out of the guidance at 25%. So yes, uh, the back of the envelope calculation today suggests that we had taken between 50 to 20% on organic growth while taking the balance 5% coming in from acquisition. So that, that was the structure of the 25%. When we started the year, and we were progressing recently well on that. But, you know, uh, over the last uh, six months, the organic bit of the business has been facing some bit of, you know, headwinds, uh, which is which is quite clear, looking at all the other IT companies in the results, and even what we see in the market. So, basis that we came back and took a look, a hard look at our Q3, Q4, that's the basis on which we have now saying that our organic growth would be about 12%. While if we do any acquisition, that will be in addition to the percent. So we have distinction now. So the organic revenue guidance has come down from 15 to 20 percent to about 12 percent. What does this bake uh, in in terms of Q3 and Q4? What are you expecting? So if you look at the half year over half year, in constant currency, we have done about 12.7 percent. So we have to do a similar kind of repeat over Q3 and Q4. Uh, uh, to to meet that number of 12% that we have out there. Why, why that? I should also caution you that typically the third quarter for us, which is October, November, December, is a softer quarter. And unlike earlier years, we have uh, two less working days. You know, it may look very operationally uh, focused, answer, but each day is about $750,000 at our size. I'm sure it's a lot more for the larger companies. So it's, it's very important that we manage the work base to make sure that we are able to build and we are able to do the work and uh, grow at the same time with this, this slight limitation in Q3 of this year. So it's taking into account these operational things, the customer discussions that are happening, we come out with this number of 12% for the year. Okay, got that. 12% organic revenue growth for the year. Gentlemen, good morning and thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, Mr. Anant Raju, if I can come to you now, could you also take us through where things stand on the m and front? Because when we spoke to you last, uh, maybe last month in September, you did mention that there are a couple of companies in the pipeline. So where do things stand now? Is there any progress on that? Uh, so we continue to be engaged with these, uh, with these two uh, companies and as you know, any uh, uh, acquisition is binary in nature. Either you close it or you don't close it. And, uh, you know, uh, 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 with one of them, at least, there's been some interest and we've been going back and forth. And But it's uh, never done till it's, you know, you've inked it and you've, uh, uh, you've closed it out. So we, we are quite uh, hopeful that we'll be able to get something done. But uh, this is a conversation that's continuing. We also have, uh, you know, we've continued to engage with uh, other acquisition candidates beyond the couple that we talked about in September. And, uh, you know, we've been reviewing and having discussions with them, going over doing uh, uh, evaluation of their uh, uh, strategy and their financials. So that's also an activity that's uh, going on. And So how uh, many are you engaging with top... right now? Last time we spoke, you said around two or three candidates. How many are you engaging with right now? Is there any kind of timeline? Because on one, you did say that there's significant interest. So, you know, again, timeline, I don't want to comment because uh, it, it just depends on both sides being able to uh, come together. We still have two, three, uh, uh, you know, good candidates in the pipeline. We're, we churned a couple out and we've added a couple in the last uh, two months since we spoke. 
we you know we we quite uh, cautiously optimistic that we'd be able to get something done uh, but as i said you know you never know till you actually close the deal and uh, so that's what uh, uh, but it's it's a huge focus area for uh, venkat me and for the rest of the executive board mm -hmm. so hopefully we'll hear more on the acquisitions bit in the coming few few weeks or few a uh, few months uh, venkat you want to come in on that sure uh, always hopeful of closing that acquisition you know that joseph mentioned this binary uh, and you know there are very small things that keep up keep it from closing and uh, the hope is to make sure that we iron out those things if any and close sure. out uh, those discussions that we have sure sure so let me uh, venkat let me come back to organic growth and what's happening with the business here because that drawdown in the guidance from 15 to 20% to 12% could you give more color on on it uh, you know what made you lower that number what exactly are clients saying are these deferrals we are talking about are there potential you know uh, sort of cancellations or you know just what is the client mood and environment like and if you could just tell us about you know the individual verticals as well where is this uh, most apparent let me just give you the numbers uh, perspective and then joseph can add because he's closer to the market so we did 3.3 in quarter 1 3.6 in quarter 2 it's a similar kind of trend that we are expecting to do in q3 and q4 which will total up to the 12% that we have it takes into account uh, current contracts current engagements the new signups that we have and the pipeline that we have uh, as far as markets are concerned we have signed up seven new logos this quarter we had 13 last quarter and 14 the quarter before that so the signups are happening it's just that you know the the, the propensity to spend or the velocity at which they are spending is slightly on the slower side it, it's the commitment is there but you know you have to really sign a check and move forward that that's what i think happening when i look at contract closures or sign ups to revenues that are really while while joseph can uh, will 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 tell us more about the market trend there is no cancellation there is no pushback on uh, rates or any of those are even asking for discounts which were there and here and there during covid times but none of that is uh, in our current set of customers as we speak hmm. uh, joseph you want to add to that yeah just to add a little bit more uh, color uh, to the uh, demand and market uh, conditions uh, at a broad level what at least we are seeing is that customers still are intent or they need to invest in their digital initiatives and uh, uh, it's it's a matter of timing uh, because they either needed to 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 stay abreast of competition or differentiate right? and in some cases also do cost optimization or save cost and so given this the other trend that we are also seeing is that Uh, many of our customers are starting their uh, engagement with a discovery or consulting exercise to get a better sense of what are the different use cases that they would be able to implement and what kind of benefits that it would give them and unlike in the past where they would either take all of these use cases and implement them or take most of them they are breaking this up and in many cases there's a gap between the uh, the discovery phase and the implementation phase uh and uh, also uh, you know breaking it up into smaller components and doing it in a sequential manner which is elongating the sales cycle and the revenue uh, actualization and that's one of the reasons why we took a step back uh, you know in in, uh, in the last month or two and said that the pace at which even though we are closing new logos the pace at which we would be able to book revenues would be slower than what we thought and that's the reason why you know we we had to relook our guidance the other point that i just wanted to mention out here one of the things positives that we are seeing is that cutting across all verticals uh we are seeing a heavy interest in adopting genii as a way to uh, to to either optimize current processes or to look at how to generate new streams of revenue and that's the reason why we announced the formation of the gen ai business unit even though we've been for the last one year investing and building capabilities we thought that it had the potential to be a separate business unit to be uh, to 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 give us significant revenue boost 
Uh, and that's the reason why we went ahead and uh, you know uh, established this uh, business unit. Uh, would have loved to chat with you some more, uh, Joseph and uh, Venkat, on what you expect from Gen AI in terms of uh, you know revenue accretion. But out of time on Trading R, thank you very much for joining in and wish you all the very best. Well, that's uh, happiest minds for you. Expect Q3 and Q4 to be similar to the first half of the year, which is where the company had delivered about a 3-3.5% top line growth. Out of time on Trading R from the entire team, thank you for watching.